Are you serious? Yeah. No smoking at a newspaper? Company policy for the last five years. Well, how do people write without nicotine? Oh, we have a designated smoking area. Oh, good. Where? You just follow the exit signs until you find yourself in front of the building. Uh, bottom line, Mal, as an ex-smoker, I'm the only one on the floor who likes to smell a secondhand smoke, but no one else the dad who does. Well, I quit smoking when my kids were little, and uh, then I followed secondhand smoke like a marlin through the Gulf Stream. I was insanely attracted to women who reeked of used ashtrays. <clears throat> But uh, civilization uh, is built on respect for the community and in deference to the wishes of the community, I will remove myself and my weeds. But in the interests of uh, consistency, I must insist that the both of you uh, give up automobiles, pesticides, and outdoor barbecues. Be seeing you. I'm sure that Mel can seem intimidating, but it's probably just that you're upset about Blair and what's happened with Joey. It's a good thing you weren't in Paris when all this happened. This way we can all be together. In comfort, Blair. Oh! Who is that? Huh? Madam Publisher, please uh, feel free to settle anywhere. Although I don't, uh have anything really interesting to offer except the spectacle of a grown man typing with four fingers. Please, allow me to provide a little excitement. You uh, might want to use your office. The thought had crossed my mind, yes. Uh, <clears throat> my apologies, they wouldn't, uh, they wouldn't let me smoke in the city room. <clears throat> my goodness. Uh-oh. It belatedly occurs to me that you yourself might be a proponent of clean lungs. Oh, I like to grab the occasional gulp of fresh air, yes. Well, in that case, please forgive me. Mr. Hayes, has anyone explained to you our policy on smoking in this building, anywhere in this building? Oh, the uh, subject may have come up, but you know, when I really get into a story, just about everything slips my mind. And this one, this one is like investigating an airplane crash you know those those fellows on the faa how they how they sift through the wreckage until gradually they're able to to reconstruct an entire passenger jet plane a, a heartbeat before disaster yes i've seen them do it it is truly remarkable well i'm reconstructing the collision of two lives patrick and the driver of the other car no 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 no, no. i mean i mean thornhart and and your brother I mean, this, this, this insane auto accident is just a, another episode in a story that leads back to Ireland and the extraordinary convergence of events that brought Patrick and Todd together. I mean, it's the stuff of Greek theater. I'm the pedal for the stuff of a front page story. Uh, uh, Todd saving uh, Patrick's life. Patrick's son uh, almost saving the life of Todd's daughter. Each of them fathering a child by the same woman. I mean, the, the, the critical timing of events that led up to the accident. I mean, the Greeks imagined that individual destiny was something uh, somehow spun and woven by three women they called the fates. And when it comes to Todd and Patrick, the fates have seemed to have turned out a, a yard goods sale. Oh, that's a fresh approach. I like fresh. Uh, hmm. I notice you're about to wield that odious aerosol in my direction, and uh, I'm sure the propellants they use in that thing are very bad for the lungs, so perhaps it uh, might be... A good idea if uh, I were to uh, retreat uh, to my desk. I think it would be an excellent idea. <clears throat> um, and again, uh, many thanks for the involuntary hospitality. Oh, Mel? Uh. Please don't forget these. And by all means, smoke them in the park. I understand flower beds make an excellent ashtray. 